This is a video who go, that goes out to the victims of narcissistic abuse who feel or felt unusually disposable when comparing yourself to other victims or other um, supply sources of your narcissist. This um, is something that is known as a transitional supply source. And it is a relatively new term that is floating around in the narcissistic abuse community that uh, I have been asked about many times. This video will also apply to people who were in long-term relationships with narcissists and um, many of them who are uh, trapped with children as well. As we all know, the narcissist is always on the lookout uh, they are always on the prowl. But after a longer and more substantial relationship, they are usually looking for someone to take out all of their contempt and hatred for the last supply source on. They are looking for somebody to be a temporary, a temporary target, somebody that they plan on disposing of as soon as they find something else, something that could be longer term. And because of this, many people get ripped out of the love bombing phase way earlier than other victims of narcissistic abuse. And with transitional supply sources, the idealization phase is uh, very, very lazy. There is no money, no extravagant vacations, no actions, no really, uh, no real special treatment. And you are seeing a lot of words and it's just words, 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 words. And words sucked you into the relationship, the transitional relationship, because you wanted to believe those words so badly. So as the narcissist is transitioning from uh, or between two stable relationships, they need something or someone, something to a narcissist to fill that in between void. Because as we all know, most narcissists absolutely abhor being alone. And although they may not have the next target scouted out, quite yet, they already understand that they are not staying with the transitional victim. And but to that, the, the transitional victim does not know this. And the, the relationship with the narcissist to the victim means everything. It means the world to them. And it's, uh, it's attention and appreciation that you've sometimes never experienced before. And it appeals to your deepest dreams and your deepest desires and uh, your dreams of making someone else happy. And it seems like they know you so well, all too well, because they are mirroring you and you feel these victims feel that they have found their soulmate, much like longer term relationship victims, um, after a long period of frustration and loneliness. But um, much like their cohorts, people uh, who have who are in the longer term relationship, um, th their words and their actions, you start to notice that those things are not matching up and they uh, narcissists are especially indifferent with their transitional victims. And they leave you with this, this sensation, the feeling that um, they are being very, very insensitive and they are. And they tend, you, you, feel, you tend to fill in their abuse in your mind with your own um, love in hopes that you can restore that very brief love bombing stage uh, in the beginning. And victims will often, experience, the transitional victims do experience the cognitive dissonance and the, the trying to project their own reasoning onto the unreasonable person and um, just like in a long-term relationship with a narcissist. And uh, again, their behavior, the narcissist's behavior is, not, is neither accidental or unintentional. And then for not just transitional victims, but all victims of narcissistic abuse, the most heartbreaking moment comes. They discard you and they run off with a brand new person. And sometimes you never even saw it coming and they seem like they are ready to settle down very quickly. They move in together very quickly. They're um, posting pictures on social media. They're paying for things and they are living the life that you always dreamed of for you, for the, for you and the narcissist. And it, it is the ultimate insult when, um, 
when you are not given any of that special treatment and you have to witness it being given to someone else. So basically, as soon as they got their quick fix from that transitional victim, they got the quick fix of power and control. They needed it to feel re-energized in order to love bomb the next victim, the more uh, longer term victim after the transitional victim. And they had to scout out their next great adventure. So Statistically, uh, most victims of domestic violence and narcissistic abuse will return to their abusers seven times before they finally realize that their abuse and that the treatment, their treatment is unacceptable and that they have to get out and leave for good. So here is the cycle that um, we as victims are left with. And um, with each cycle, every time you go back to the narcissist, and this ju isn't just for transitional victims, this is for all victims, uh, it gets progressively worse. And uh, usually it's the relationship is a shorter, in a shorter time period. Um, you stay together uh, for a brief time and then you're breaking up shorter periods of time. So uh, we have the classical idealize, devalue, uh, discard, rinse and repeat. And then finally, we have a breakthrough or a, uh, a breaking point. And uh, this is what a transitional victim would get or a transitional target. They're going to get a very mediocre idealization phase with very huge promises. Again, all words that are making you feel amazing. And then boom, a sudden discard that you did not expect out of nowhere hits you from behind. Naturally, this leaves you with zero closure because you can't even look back at the cycle of violence that exists for most people. Not that you would want to by any means, but you're basically just left in this purgatory or in this limbo after abandonment from a ridiculous high to a devastating low and no time or perspective to realize what the hell just happened to you. And it's absolute emotional torture and we are left uh, only with this intense love and uh, a horrible cruel discard as narcissists use their mind games on every target not just transitional targets and it's always the same but the difference is with the transitional targets they mm -hmm. never experience that full love bombing stage um, and with some time and uh, there is not a lot of stability. There might be a brief uh, period of stability, but it's not very long before things uh, blow up because this is uh, this is due to the narcissist never intending for the transitional target to become a stable part of their life to begin with. And um, they were perfect. The transitional target was perfect for what they wanted at the time, admiration, attention, power, and control, but a very brief period of time. The narcissist more than likely also recognized that the transitional victim and all victims are very emotionally intelligent and uniquely per, uh, perspective, perceptive. And the fact that you could read that narcissist like a book is not some sort of accident because most victims of narcissistic abuse are truth seekers determined to find out exactly what has happened to us. For others, the highs and lows can be less extreme which is useful, but also ironically frustrating to the narcissist as narcissists settle for uh, victims who don't truly see their nasty behavior for, for what it truly is. And um, for, for most uh, people who have, who have already been through the cycles multiple times, um, this means that the narcissist could never settle for us because we are too educated on narcissistic abuse and we know what to look for. So, um, on one hand, the, the eventual long-term victim is useful because they won't point out the lying and cheating and they are very submissive. But on the other hand, the narcissist silently resents these people. Ironically, they resent them for not seeing through their facade. And it's so strange. And they pretend they, they give off this happy and um, this happy image with the, the way that they've settled down. But they really, truly do much prefer the thrill of someone more empathetic, someone who truly feels the the torture of the mind games, sick as, sick as it is. And the narcissist can rarely have one of these type of people in a permanent relationship or a, what a narcissist would consider a permanent situation or a longer term relationship that lasts uh, many years. So instead, 
they use these 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 uh this certain type of person uh, during these transitional periods, like a they're like a really quick potent high before they right before they settle down, and every once in a while they will end up spending years with a highly empathetic person. And I know several people from this community who are in this situation and they are usually locked in by family and children. And these dynamics often, too often, uh, seem to also result in horrific discards and physical abuse because over time, a victim uh, is so keen that they form this remarkable understanding of the abuser. Many survivors tell stories of love bombing that lacked the actual courtship scene with the next target, the target after them. And um, they never got to spend as much time with them as, uh, as the others. And they experienced a very short fling that was cut off very abruptly in the middle of the love bombing stage. And um, they, they find themselves with this un, unbelievably vicious identity erosion. And suddenly the narcissist has settled down with another partner, leaving these victims wondering how they are able to spend years with this person when they could barely handle a few weeks or a few months with the transitional victim. Um, and that's the point. As narcissists and the psychopaths, sociopaths, uh, that most of them, they cannot last long with empathetic people in unless uh, they have children and families in not all cases, but many, many, many cases, uh, because they they you tend to absorb their poison and they get high off of sweeping a person off of their feet and making them turning them, molding them into this perfect servant to their mind games. But the downside is subconsciously, eventually you spend spit that poison right back in their face. And you don't want to ruin the love bombing phase, but you find yourself unable to stop pointing out their lies, their inconsistencies, and their changed behavior. Transitional targets are powerful, truth-seeking targets. And anyone who is listening to this who figured them out all the way down to their nasty core, narcissists will never admit it, but they they always have this kind of bitter respect for people who can see them for what they really are. And at the same time, they strongly resent those who cannot see them, even though that's all they really can get in the long run, which is the most ironic thing in the entire universe. And this is why they always lose and feel a need to keep reinventing the rules and moving the goalposts um, to and playing this game that they only know the rules to and convincing themselves that their choice is correct. But the fact is narcissists do settle and they always do. And that's why they need to destroy a target before settling in order to convince themselves that they are not losing anything special. So why not make your yourself, uh, why not make you self-destruct or even kill yourself? Um, and that for the narcissist, that, that means that the nagging doubts in their mind and the toxic shame isn't coming up and they are the, the, the doubts are gone for the narcissist. And from the victim's perspective, this is why we are left so resentful and angry because we did so much and we were encouraged by their fake um, appreciation and all of the things that they, that they did that kept us going. And at the very least, why couldn't they have just been a jerk or an asshole from the start? So we would have known not to waste our time and emotions. Instead, they use words and our own brain chemistry against us to brainwash in, brainwash us into giving and giving and giving and giving until we had no nothing left to give. So when they not only don't appreciate it, but actually destroy us, we are left feeling even more broken and empty. And it is inhumane. It is not human. And then you see them running off with someone else, paying for things, settling down, buying a house, having children. And it makes you think, hey, maybe they are capable of a relationship after all. Maybe the problem was really me.